What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Today's a good day because we're going all the way back to our roots and doing a good old-fashioned hardware mod. Now, if you'll remember back in the day, I did this RGB and translucent case mod. Now, this is my first hardware modded flipper. So this guy has the transparent blue case on there and it's got the RGB mod that I have a pink and blue screen on. I also recently printed out these cool little buttons. These are from ZR Kraken. I've got way more cool stuff to install. Now this blue one was the first flipper I ever modded and I'm kind of going to keep it the way I modded it first, but I actually have another one. Now this guy's also clear, but there's no color to it. And I did that for a specific reason. I knew eventually there was going to be a mod that would put RGB LEDs inside the case, not just the backlight. I also have a ton of 3D printed stuff. So today we're going to be doing the RGB screen mod. We're going to be using this cool little flexible PCB by Zebro to put RGB LEDs inside the case as well. Plus, we're going to go ahead and replace as many parts as we possibly can inside the flipper with 3D printed parts. After all that's done, that's going to be pretty much about as modded out as you can get a flipper zero right now. So let's get at it. So first things first, I got to thank PCBWay for printing out my version of this board. Now they are for sale at rabbit-lab.com, so definitely check them out down there if you want to do this mod yourself. Now this mod's been in the works for a while, and it's a joint effort between Zebro, Rabbit Labs, and Astro. If you happen to know any of those folks, they are extremely competent and capable people, so when they get together, good things happen. All right, so that's enough yapping for me. Let's switch cameras and take a look. All right, so first of all, little lay of the land. We've got our flipper right here. I actually have a new case I got printed. Fun fact, this is actually a prototype. If you look at the holes on here, I actually hand drilled them. That's why they look terrible. This is actually ZR Kraken's first model when we were figuring out, you know, exactly what to do. And the first run, the clear spray varnish actually closed the holes up on it. And you can even see this clip. That clip doesn't really clip super good, and it's because of the spray varnish. The new version, everything's fixed up. Those holes look way better, so don't worry about that. Speaking of ZR Kraken, over here we have the frame, the lanyard loop, and buttons that I custom printed based off of his models. Let's show you the PCB, which is this guy right here. Very cool, designed by Zebro, and these are all NeoPixels. We have a little bit of a ground and a five volt. We're gonna actually solder straight through that and attach that to our flipper. It's gonna be really freaking cool. All right, so let's power this down, off, and let's take this guy apart. It's held together with these four screws right here, and it's a PH00 is what I'm using to take this off. I have found that works really well. I haven't stripped anything out, so double zero is my favorite. I'm gonna double check that I got all of these unscrewed all the way. Okay, so now the important part, you wanna lift this straight up, as straight up as humanly possible. That's why you wanna make sure you've got all those screws all the way out, because you don't wanna break your pogo pins. Now the pogo pins are these guys right here. See those three little pins? They're extremely, extremely easy to break off. So just be really, really careful. Also, while I'm thinking of it, push this over here. I'm actually gonna remove the NFC board and the screws, so don't forget about those. Don't know why that was so hard to do, but here we go, we got our screws out. And let's take off the NFC board from the back of this guy. Now, if you're brand new and you've never taken your flipper apart before, you can just use a guitar pick to get underneath there. Now, the adhesive is really strong, so you're going to have to kind of work at it. Just be careful. Take your time. You can apply heat, which does help some. But again, just take your time and it will come off. Two very boring minutes later. Voila. Now, the new back case, I'm not even going to bother using this tape that's on here. I hate this tape, so I'm actually just going to try to get this all off. All right, so that's the most of it. There's a little bit of residue on there, but that's not going to hurt anything. All right, so let's continue disassembly. This is the part I always forget to do, which is I'm like lost now because it's upside down. We need to remove the SD card that's in there. So let's see if I can get in there with my short nails. There it is. I always forget to remove the SD card and it causes me nothing but annoyance. So now we have two screws that we need to remove and actually one's right there that I already am missing because I have taken this apart so many times. You sure about that? And the other one is in here. Excellent. So this should just kind of come out now. Oh, whoops. The screw's actually in this hole. That's where I was wrong. Now we're out. One, two. Yep. Get out. There we go. Don't forget to take your screen because you're going to want that. And then this is the little IR arm. 
uh, old case will go over here. Now, actually, in the little IR window right here, you can see it has this arm on here. We don't need that because what that does is it actually covers, you can see I cut it off on this one, it covers the spring. I don't want to cover the spring. I like seeing the spring or the antenna. Sorry, it's not a spring, it's an antenna. So I'm going to go ahead and just chop that little guy off. Clippy clip. This will go flying across the room. Avert your eyes. Safety squints, guys. Bing. Cool. Put this over here so I don't lose it. Put this over here. And we're going to need to make some space because it's about time to start soldering stuff. From here, we'll go ahead and actually let's kick these screws out so we don't lose them. There we go. One and two. Put them over here. And we'll disconnect our battery. Battery disconnected. Go ahead and flip it over. And both of these cables are going to need to come out. So these are just kind of lift. Oh, we lift the other way. Boop. Boop. There we go. These will come out. They're just useless tweezers. Why are these so bad? There we go. Out. Now, with the utmost care, we're going to go ahead and remove the I button. So be really careful. This is exactly how I broke the pins last time. So that's unscrewed and this board should come right out. I'm actually going to pick up on the pins. I'm so scared. Be careful. There we go. We live. All right, let's move this out of the way. We're going to flip this over and we're going to take off the battery chassis. That was scary and way harder than necessary. Move our battery out of the way. And then this black part's going to unclip. So let's get the black part unclipped. Now, this is a slightly different revision from the first flippers. This is a newer one. It does have screws holding the black part in. It used to just be clips. So let's go ahead and take those out. Is that all of them? One, two. Now this should come out. There it is. Off. And we're actually going to be replacing all this stuff. All right, so we want to flip this around and then open up this guy because we need to pull this ribbon cable out as well. There we go. Ribbon cable come out. And then the fun part, because we're going to have to desolder both of these points in order to get this screen off. So let me grab my soldering pad. All right, so that's kind of a better view. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually add some flux right to the pads right here. Now, this is chip quick, no clean flux, so we don't have to clean up after ourselves. I know everybody like, yells at me about it, but we're not going to clean up. But just get some flux in there, and we're going to start melting these pads down so we can get the screen off. So here I've got my trusty TS-100, and we're just going to start heating stuff up once we get up the temperature. Already got a lot of it out. Good start so far. And I hit the camera. Sorry, guys. Trying not to hit the camera, but it's like three inches over the top of this thing right now. So it's a little tricky, but we're going to do our best. Go ahead and add a little more flux because we got to make sure we get as much of this solder out of here as possible because that screen is absolutely annoying to take off. So repeat the process. You can use solder wick for this as well. I don't have very good solder wick, so we're just going to be doing it this way. But I've done it before, so hopefully it works just fine and we can do it again. So now this is the hard kind of awkward part. So I'm hoping I can film this as well as possible. I remember it being very challenging last time as well. But let's see if we can get these things off. Let's see if we can kind of like heat this up while pushing down on this pin. It's actually kind of moving. Ooh, is it working? Yeah, it's kind of moving. All right, let's do the other one. Careful not to melt anything else. I don't want to move. Okay, cool. All right, so from this point, let's see if I've got any space underneath this screen yet, which, eh, maybe a little bit of space. It's hard to see. Let me grab a guitar pick, see if I can get in there. Once you can get a tool in between the board and the screen, it makes life so much easier. All right, not quite. So let's keep seeing if we can work at this thing. This is definitely the hardest part of this whole thing. So be very careful. Take your time. Now, this is actually the trick that worked for me last time. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to flux them. And since we're replacing this board right here, we don't have to be too careful. Well, we do want to be careful, but we don't have to worry about potentially breaking or damaging these pins. We're actually going to add solder. I know it sounds counterproductive, but adding solder actually helps reflow solder. I'm just going to go ahead and add some solder here. Always hard to work around the camera. All right. If you add the solder in there, it's melted. I'm just going to try to push down on this guy, get some daylight. Not sure if that helps but we're going to keep working at it. All right, decided to kind of go nuclear on it. I'm just going to use my fingernail in this, and I think I can just get right in there, finish this off. Oh, there it goes. Not the recommended way of doing this, but I don't recommend doing anything the way I do it because I'm insane. There it is. Flip it over and be ever so nice to it, but here we go. Don't pull off the back part because that's going to stick. Let's be real slow. There it is. 
We got the board and we got the screen now. Fantastic. From here, we can just ever so careful, gently get this board out, which I remember was actually kind of tricky the first time I did it. Um, let me try this. Now, granted, I had a different revision of Flipper back then, so maybe it's easier now? Nope, it's pretty stuck on there, so we're gonna have to work this out as well. Yep, got the adhesive coming up. There we go. Out. Success. Now from here, we'll actually, whoops, careful. We'll actually need to set up our new boards. This is the old one. This one's smoked out. Nobody wants this. Dead. We'll get to set up the new board, which is right here. All right, so let's lift this up a little bit so you can see it. There we go. You can see that there's a D in right there. So that's the input and this is the data output. So we need to put some wires onto there. So first things first, let's flux up our pads because we're going to solder wires to this guy over here. This is going to want to move. This is not the best way to hold this. But if I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, this is what we got to do. So we're going to make it happen. All right, we'll tin our tip and then we'll start adding a little bit of solder to this project. There we go. There we go. So I have this this wire prepared, which is a little bit of a shorter wire. This is going to go into the DN, the data in place. And just ever so carefully get this guy stuck to that guy. Got him. Then we have a longer wire. It's going to go to the D outside. So same thing. Turn the tip a little bit. Just ever so carefully. Day. Get this wire attached to that wire. Whoops. Let it get away. Never underestimate how long water stays flowing. There it is. Clean this stuff just a little bit. Wire's a little long, I'll just clip it. But there we go. Now we have our backlight wired up so far. It's out of the way. Let's see if we can't get this thing clipped together. Oh, and it can help to peel this back a little bit to give you the space to get it in there. But it'll go. Just kind of got to work it. Okay. And we're in. Clipped in. Ready to go. So then we'll go ahead and position this up so that we can get our backlight in. Pull the wires out of the way. Here we go. Wires are out of the way. Line these up with the holes. Are those pretty good on that side? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's see if they're clear enough to get this board through. Nope, looks like there's still some schmutz in there. We're gonna have to clean out. Oh yeah, definitely. So let's go ahead and get that taken care of. Is that fun or what? What? Now back to our show. So everything's all cleaned up so we can take our board or our screen for that matter. Plop it right in here. Get that nice and lined up. One in. There we go, we got two in. Push it down nice and flat, make sure everything's in. Cool, and then we can solder this together. So let's move these wires, hook that around here, and get it stacked back up. Get in there with some flux, flux these up real good. Good there, good there, and let's get that soldered on. So we move this wire out of my way, and solder. There we go. Don't be bashful. Make sure there's plenty in there. Don't got to go nuts, but want to make sure there's enough. And number two. Careful. Oh, shoot. My iron got cold. That's what's going on. I'm like, what's happening? There we go. Temperature's back. Let's go, boys. No more cold solder. That was weird. Done and done for those. So one thing that we also need to do is actually connect this pin to ground. So we're actually going to run it right to our Flipper Zero ground. Now, some of the instructions have you going to a ground. It's like this pin right there, but it's way too hard. I'm just going to go from here right to the ground right here for our GPIO and share that one. Go ahead and flux both of those. There we go. A little bit more there. And we'll get that going. Got ourselves a wire. We'll pin the tip of our soldering iron. There we go. And just attach this guy here. Just being careful not to hit this cap right next to it. Oh, not quite. And we're on. Want to figure out our wire length. Let's give ourselves a little bit of extra just in case, because, you know, it's not really going to hurt anything. Let's go to about there. Eh, that's, a, that's fine. That's fine. Strip it. Careful. Don't want to be too long, because, you know, don't want it to bridge anything. That would suck. Back out to our soldering iron. Here we go. Let's tin this. I'm gonna hit this pad first. That's not much. My solder doesn't want to mix with the factory solder too well, but I'm not gonna give them an option. 
little more solder on here than I need, but not gonna let that bother us. That's fine. That's good enough. Now we get to the fun one. Let's move this out of the way because we need to get to this vibro pen. This little tiny guy right there. That's the next one that we're gonna solder this short wire to. So being super careful, let's flux that and add a little bit of solder to the pad. My flux is coming out of this thing. Let me wipe that off. If you'll notice the electrical tape on this, it's because I melted through my flux. I have bad habit of doing that. So let's get in there just a little bit. I don't want to go nuts because I don't want to bridge anything. Let's get a little bit of solder on that pad to start with. It's in the, just the itty bitty tip of this guy. Let's see if we can just do that. There we go. Almost nothing. That's all we need is almost nothing. We're going to flux it again. Again, just a teeny tiny bit of flux. Size up our wire and strip this guy. I want this wire to sit kind of in this little crook. So, okay, so we can cut that down to about there. There we go. And that one, I'm just barely going to have enough of this wire sticking out because I really don't want to bridge anything. All right, got our iron again. Flux this, just a tiny bit of solder on this. I don't need much. And then let's be really careful. Let me grab my tweezers. This will probably help this. That's it. And we didn't even break anything, I don't think. All righty, so we got our two wires sitting right there and we're ready to go. Let's plug this back in. Sorry, I'm covering everything with the camera. It's hard to do. Go. Put that back and the screen's in. So now we're gonna start assembling things again. So I don't think I need these stands anymore. So at this point we can also start assembling some of the cool 3D printed parts that we have, like this guy. So I'm gonna take off this screw. Oh, there we go. All right, so we're gonna take this guy out and replace it with this guy. Super cool. It just sits kind of like this. And this is our lanyard loop, if you're curious what this thing is. Oh yeah, there it is right there. That's where it sits. Put our screw back through, working around the camera. Sorry guys, if I keep hitting it. There we go. Just our angle. And we're just gonna do this one by hand, just until it feels snug enough that I don't think it's gonna come out and I think it's flush. There we go, that's good. So now we have blue piece on there, freaking cool. We can put our battery back on. Slide our cable through here. There we go. Now this is supposed to come out. Let's go over this wire over this wire. It's supposed to come out near the USB right there. So that's what we'll do. Make sure this wire is not in the way, which I'm already doing a bad job of. Here we go. That goes here. That goes here. Line all this up and get this all clipped back in. All right. I think that's all together. Fantastic. Let me put something down so I can screw this together. Just got a paper towel here so I don't scratch my screen up. Put some of these back together. Make sure that's all the way in. Clip that down. This is going to be for the pogos. All right, with that like that, let's move this out of the way for the moment. And then let's grab this guy, which is our RGB board. It's going to be super cool. So first of all, this requires some light folding. So this is going to fold right along this edge. Let's see how easy this is. Never really folded a flexible PCB before. I feel like this is wrong, but it's going to fold right over this corner. Eh, just like that. Try to get the edges and everything kind of lined up. Don't need to crease it. it just needs to kind of fold up i think that's good enough and then this tab folds up cool and then this tab folds up cool now we've got this really cool two millimeter tessa tape it's two-sided tape this stuff is really 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 strong for the size of it so i'm gonna cut the smallest bit off it's gonna fly across the room i will find it and i'll be right back now we'll go ahead and take that double-sided tape and we're gonna put it right on the back of this guy right here and then we can go ahead and install this onto our flipper. So let's see, how are we gonna do this? Okay, so this guy's gonna sit right like this. So you can see it kinda already has a spot for it right there and right there. Perfect, that's good there. And let's see if we can get our double-sided tape to stick. I'm gonna need something to poke it with. Got our tweezers, hold this in place, and let's give it a little stick. So that should stick on there, and that should be stuck on there forever. Now what we need to do is solder this wire that's over here into our data end. So let's get this sized and ready to go. And just like before, we're gonna go ahead and give her some flux and some solder. I'm just gonna be nice to it. Make sure my soldering iron's nice and warm. Get some down the pad. Pad's good. And let's just go ahead and get this wire on here. Brilliant, we're on. Now this next part's a little bit dicey because we're gonna basically connect the board to this flexible board, this RGB board. We're gonna do it through these two through holes. So I'm gonna give them a little bit of flux already and then line them up. Actually, let me wipe some of that off so I can see. Okay, cool. They are lined up right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tin the tip of my soldering iron with a decent amount now. Try to line this up and try to just nail this down in one go. So I can get one of them, should be pretty easy to get them both. So make sure we're lined up. 
can check through the camera. Yeah, that looks lined up. Let's go ahead and hope for the best. That one stuck. Ain't pretty, but it's stuck. And the five volts is gonna hold it on there even better. So this will be a better connection. Let's get this going. Let's push down on this real hard next to it and see if I can get that to make me feel better. That feels pretty good. I may have made a little bit of a mess of it, but I think that's gonna work just fine. And yeah, I think we're ready to reassemble. Grab our menace to society, the I button. Let's kick the screw out of here. Might as well plug this in. Okay, plugged in. Carefully get it located. And then let's see if I can screw this in without hitting the camera too many times. This is how I broke the I button last time. Line it all up. That looks like that should be good. Ever so careful. There we go. Let me finish this by hand. Kind of tight. Don't got to go nuts. Perfect. That all looks fantastic. So let's plug our power back in. Oof. See, that's why you don't plug things in prematurely. And you'll notice that the screen does not work. The backlight doesn't work. That is completely normal for these. That happens pretty much every time. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's a good sign that it powered on. So it means I didn't horribly, horribly break everything. Now we can put on the frame. This kind of sits in place here. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I'm going to wrangle up this wire right here. Be careful of the vibro motor. See that little guy right there? That's going to spin. So we just want to make sure we don't hit that. So actually, let me just jam some more of this wire into here. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, cool. That'll be fine. Take our back right here. Line these guys up. It fits in there really nicely. Whoops, you can't even see. Sorry. So that just sits right on there like that. And then let's see if we can line everything up sitting like this. Is it going to stay? There's just enough stickiness on there for it to all stay in place. Let's line up our I buttons and all these LEDs being really careful not to booger anything up too badly. There we go. There we go. There we go. Good. Tuck the LEDs in as you're putting this board on. It is a bit of a tight fit, but if you're careful, so this is where you could easily just break all those off. So just be really careful. Tuck them in tight. Sing a little lullaby. So that's as far as we're going to go on this side. Same thing here. Place this down. Put my buttons in. Don't assemble without buttons. This one goes here. This one goes, whoops, underneath here. It's keyed. That's not keyed. Perfect. All right. And now more sketchiness is getting the front of this put back up. Oh, forgot. Hold on. Pop the screen in. Going to want a screen. All right, cool. So it took a little bit of finagling, but I got it all together. So let's go ahead and put our screws back in. Make sure our clips are all good and happy. I don't want to break one of these NeoPixels off now. And right here, if you look closely, you can actually see I broke a NeoPixel off already. So we're going to run into that a little bit later. But, you know, you really got to be careful with these things. Like, real careful. There we go. Clips on. That's in, and then the last one. Cool, so now we have everything we need except for one last thing, which is actually to install Zebro's own firmware. So let's go ahead and do that. So here is Zebro's GitHub repository for the firmware that we need. We're gonna go down to the release here and just download it. We're gonna do this just the same way we've done pretty much everything. So desktop, we'll save that there, save, and then just open up QFlipper. We're gonna go to install from file install the file we just downloaded and click install that's just it give it a second let's see what happens there we go the backlight's working already good sign all right firmware update success fantastic okay all right cool so let's go into uh settings and we can enable this settings there we go rgb settings and let's see turn the brightness up let's go you can already see the colors on the inside and stuff changing. It's really, really cool. Let's change the internal mode to rainbow. It'll change things. That's yeah, super cool. Look at it go. Very cool. Now, I did knock off a NeoPixel right there, so the bottom line doesn't work. I have another one, so I'm going to actually retry this again. But it is very cool. So we've got the printed buttons here. We have the RGB. Oh, yeah, let's change our RGB too. LCD mode defaults. Change this to rainbow as well. So this will also do the rainbow pattern change. All in all, I got to say, I'm super psyched about how this came out. It looks awesome. I love the teal translucent filament with the orange. I think that looks great. And I like the fact that you can see right through that. I mean, how freaking cool is that? Once this bottom row of LEDs is working again, this thing will be absolutely mint. And I took the adhesive off the back, so that won't annoy me as well. Oh my God, it's so cool. This thing's so cool. It's not the easiest mod in the world, so it's not for the faint of heart. But man, if you put in the effort, it comes out great.
Man, I know that was a lot of work, but at the end of the day, I really do think it's worth it. But again, it's not for everybody. Anytime we're modding stuff like this, there's always a period of kind of struggling with stuff and oh my God, did I break something? These things happen, it's all part of the game. But if you want something really cool, at the end of the day, sometimes you just gotta go for it. Thank you so much guys for watching. It was a lot of fun making this video and hopefully you got something out of it. And I know people said they wanted to see more hands-on stuff, so hands-on. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. You guys are absolute legends and we'll catch you next time.